oil's value is 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 in its ability listen <clears throat> excuse me to retain something that would otherwise be lost let me repeat that oil's value is in its ability to retain something that would otherwise be lost and it prolongs or increases its, its value an ability to give off a pleasing fragrance and bring illumination to extreme, dark, spiritual, and human situations. The anointing has come to destroy the yoke of the enemy. And before the yoke of the enemy has to be or be broken, it has to be illuminated. And it has to be smelled in the spirit realm because too many of us miss the aroma of the presence of evil and assume a lot of times when things are going on in our churches and in our assembly that it's the presence of God but we have not properly discerned the presence of the evil one and the devil runs rapid because we lack discerning of what the true anointing is so therefore, we have demons and devils in our poor pits preaching. We have demons and devils preaching and teaching. We have demons and devils praying and dancing and prancing and doing all manner of things before the Lord. And we, the people of God, have been blindsided, bamboozled to believe that this is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit, I've been in too many services, I'm getting happy right now, where I've seen the presence of the Lord fall and a holy hush would descend upon the assembly of believers. It's like in concert, everybody at the same time got the same clue. And even those that were clueless, either caught on by the Spirit of God or when someone said, the presence of the Lord is here, they immediately calmed down. I've seen babies crying at the top of their lungs, and the presence of the Lord would descend, and the babes would hush their crying. Why? Because the true presence of the Lord had shown up. The oil had been poured out from heaven. And everyone that had any sensitivity to God, understood that there is something unique and unusual in this atmosphere. That's the atmosphere that calls for immediate worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's the atmosphere that breaks down every yoke of the enemy. That's the atmosphere where miracles truly happen. That's the, mere, that's the presence when God speaks and utters out of heaven himself using whomever he will who has properly yielded themselves to the almighty presence of the living God himself. Hallelujah. Many times I've been in services such as those and I've watched in my early years of salvation just a babe in Christ and those services were so blessed because when you left there you didn't even want to leave out of the presence of God because it was such a sweet 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 atmosphere so much so that the saints would linger around laying on their faces lying prostrate before the Lord People were seeking the filling of the Holy Ghost. People were having prayers answered. Healings were taking place without a soul laying a hand on another person. But God himself was working. People who were seeking answers received answers directly from the throne room of God himself. People that were sick in their bodies received healing. People that had demonic possessions were immediately delivered. And it fostered an atmosphere where everyone was on one accord. And no one broke ranks. 
And even there were times where the pastor got up and briefly said in a very quiet, calm voice, We know that the presence of the Lord is here, but we also know that some of you may need to leave. And if you do need and must need to leave, we pray that you leave quietly and not disturbing those that are still before the Lord because His presence is still here and is thick and it has not left it. In those services, very few people left because they sat and waited in anticipation of what God was going to do next. This was a realm that was not the realm of the flesh or humans. This was the realm of God all by himself. This, these are the type of days, brothers and sisters, that deliverance ministries thrive on. These, this is the atmosphere that we want to see when the oil of the Lord is poured out from heaven upon the pillars, the people of God, that will stand sure, fast, and firm in Him and not move until heaven has moved. Listen, until heaven has moved. It doesn't matter if the choir sings. It doesn't matter if the preacher preaches. It doesn't matter if someone gets up and pray a prayer that prays down heaven. But what does matter has God's presence shown up at Bethel, his house. And have the people of God receive from him that which is needful for their lives. Not their wants. Not their desires. But what is needful. Because when he comes that way, he is coming to change a thing permanently. There is something that he is pleased with. It's the reason why he descended. But the reason why he sticks around is to address those things within us that are still not correct. And when he lifts, he has done the work in all of us. In all of us. If we really want to see the oil in this last hour poured out on us in the church world in that magnitude, we must put aside our play game playing. Playtime in church is over. Put away your Legos. Put away your Mattel toys. Put away your Hanna Barbara uh, videos and, and cartoons. And put away your childishness. Put away your infantile ways and grow up and come into spiritual maturity. Learn to seek the face of God through prayer like you've never done so before. For the past several weeks, almost several months now, the Lord has been waking me up at 3 a.m. every single night. And initially, I had no clue what was going on. Why was I waking up at this time? So I started taking, I'm going to be honest, Benadryl so that I could sleep through the night. And then I got hip, And God got hip, And he started waking me up at 3 o'clock anyway. And you know what? And now I found out the reason. Because there is a fresh oil coming to our lives. I'm not claiming this for myself only. For work is too great for it to be just me alone. And it cannot be just the pulpit either. It has to be the body of Christ of spirit-filled believers together to accomplish this great work. If you understood the magnitude of the estate of apostasy that is not only going on in this nation, but around the world. Do your research. Many churches are experiencing a great falling away, which is indicative of the last days that we're living in when the love of many are waxing cold. But I also believe that there will be a great revival that will go throughout not only this land, but throughout this world. 
And I don't know about you, but I want to be one of the ones that are leading the charge to say it is time that we clean the household of faith and it's time to call for revival. This is not a time to call for just a revival as usual because we're infamous for calling revivals and services to raise money. But I'm talking about a refreshing that is sent from the Father that will refresh our souls and reinvigorate us with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost's purposes to reach a dying, chaotic, confused, lawless world to bring them back to the knees, to the to the to the to, the, to bow them in the presence of the Almighty God, to bring them back to their knees, not forcing them, but they're wanting to difference. When we get into the new era. When God pours out his oil, it will be so intense. Listen, listen. It will be so intense that even those that are dead in trespasses and sins will be quickened to recognize that this is the place of change. This is the place of change. Listen, Acts, the 10th chapter and the 38th verse. It says... How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The and. How God, listen, how God, when John baptized Jesus and Jesus came out of the water, John saw a dove descend from heaven and lighted upon Jesus. And he knew that this was the Messiah that they were waiting on. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Holy Ghost is the oil of the Lord, the empowering to do the work of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. How he anointed him with power. This is power to bring forth change. Notice, Jesus never made himself of a reputation. The scriptures say that he made himself of no reputation. He never came pushing his agenda. He never came pushing himself and, and asking for engagements or a place to preach. Wherever he was became his pulpit and his platform. And he opened up his mouth and things changed. Healings came forth. People's limbs grew back. Leprosy was cured. Demonic spirits were cast out forever. Never to return or inhibit anyone else again. We need to return to the Holy Ghost with power. And the only way that we're going to get there, saints... Is that we fall flat on our faces and ask God to revigorate us with the Holy Spirit. Some of us have not felt the touch of the Lord in such a long time. That we're even questioning, is he still there? Are we still saved? Is he still pleased with my life? Or is he displeased? And we as believers should never have that type of uncertainty in our spirits. There always should be a blessed assuredness that he is there constantly. That he is there blessing us. That he is there hearing what he needs to hear and taking it back to the Father. And he is directing our footsteps according to God's word and his will for our lives, for the oil that is on our lives to continue with him.